I'm Colin, and this is Samir. And about a month ago, we decided to tell other people's stories on our YouTube channel. And someone who reached out on my Facebook page was Saxon. Hey, y'all, <laughs> I'm Saxon. That's Saxon. S-A-X-O-N. Saxon. Right now, Saxon lives in Silver Lake. He has a baby, a home, and he's a rapper who performs shows in Los Angeles. But first and foremost, I'd like to say, I'm old man Saxon. <laughs> But a year ago, he was homeless. So here begins the story of Saxon. It's fucking April 29th. I slept okay. I just didn't go to sleep until late. I didn't go to sleep till like four. Saxon's story begins September 1988 in Denver, Colorado. I am from Denver, Colorado. Born and raised. My family is all from Denver. Like everyone is from Denver. Saxon and I played lacrosse together in college. That's Saxon. And there's me. And that's how I met him. You were way better than I was, uh, but yeah. I was faster. I don't know, man, we never raced. <laughs> true, but okay, true. <laughs> I'm just gonna assume I was faster. In the past five years since Saxon moved to LA, I've seen him only a couple times and didn't know much about what he was doing. I definitely didn't know he spent part of that time living out of his car. What I did know was that he was rapping. Choked up while I'm writing this. I was making music in college, probably my sophomore year. I was recording like everything on my computer and there was always people being like, damn, like you're, you're good, you're good, you're good. And there was one quote from Walter Payton who said, if you're good at something, you'll tell everyone. But when you're great at something, they'll tell you. And that kind of hit me, it was like, oh, well, everyone does. Do you really think I'm like good? Unless they're just bullshitting. And it was something where I was like, all right, well, let me start being semi-serious about it. So in the summer of 2011, Saxon moved to Los Angeles and started making music. Sit back, take a bit to think about all the shit that I'm faced with, everything I've been going through, reasons I'm not complacent. The very first video, which was off my mind, which was just me eating ice cream for three minutes. It was a $20 video. His first video, Off My Mind, got about 15,000 views in the first month. I was like, holy shit, like that's... Like I can, I think people actually like me. It's better if you don't ask. Got me on some hater shit. That's my weeks longer than my paper. Saxon continued to play more shows while selling music independently. And he released his second video on July 16th, 2013. It did twice the amount of viewership as the first one. Haters everywhere. Goddamn, 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 goddamn. They all want me to fall, but I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Before releasing another video, Saxon would spend a year living out of his car. And from talking with Saxon, there was no one main issue or event that resulted in him becoming homeless. It was more gradual, where financial decisions meet financial circumstances. Saxon Kinsey, homeless story time. I'm sleeping in the back of my car, knocked out, and I hear, boom. And I look back out the back of my window and there's a fucking like pickup truck with the lights on like right behind me. And it waits a little bit and it drives away. I'm like, oh, shit, that was weird. I'll say six months of it, maybe seven months of it was just like financial situation where I was like, I don't have enough money to do shit. And the other six months was me just being like, let me just stay in here for a little bit and just like post, because I was getting a lot of shit done as far as writing, because of the lack of distractions. His third video was released in August of 2016. That video came about from me spending a year sleeping in the back of my car. 13 months to be exact. 6 a.m. wake up all alone like what can your boy say? 
shit shower shape is taking the whole day it was scary to release it was like really terrifying because at the time no one knew but my mom didn't know like i was keeping it from everyone and like the handful of people that didn't know are my friends that lived out here everyone back in denver they just had no idea after spending the day with saxon one of the first things that i took from him and the year he spent in his car is that honesty can be rewarding. It was by far my most popular video, most relatable video, some magical way of just people being like, hey, I live in my car now, like this is my life right now. And it was just like a gift. It was a gift that I went through that just so I could be at the place that I'm at right now. I believe 100% if I didn't go through that, I'd still be making songs about, you know, women and popping bottles and shit that's just an absolute lie. And it took me to be like really vulnerable and like getting into a place where I was like, okay, I'm about to just speak my truth. That other people, they just related to it. And it's by far my most like popular video. So again, number one, honesty can be rewarding. And number two. Yeah, I'm a normal ass person. I just happen to live in my car. Don't let yourself be defined by what you have and rather by what you do. <laughs> that was part of it was like, am I a good person? Like I'm broke and I'm living like, is this, this makes sense? And yeah, like I realized that I'm, I'm a legit ass person. And In LA, a city that declared homelessness a state of emergency, it's estimated that almost 10,000 people live in their cars. And when you think about like the term homeless, you're just defined by what you don't have. Like if you don't have a car, you're not carless or anything. Like if you don't have a home, you are homeless. You're a homeless person. And I think that's part of another reason why the perils, I'm proud of it, is because they add another face to homelessness where people don't assume that homeless people have talents, first off, or they are just like drug addicts or anything. That's not, it's not the case. Like there's a lot of people that are just really in like a hard situation. Some of them might just be choosing to do it. They might just be choosing to do it like I did for the last half of it. And the third thing I took from spending the day with Saxon is that life is more about managing energy than it is about managing time. A year homeless, putting your energy in a positive direction, can be more valuable than a month with everything you'd ever want, but with your energy in a negative direction. And honestly, once I like adapted to it, it was one of the like dopest experiences ever. Part of that was not having to hear any other voices, getting to write whenever I wanted, getting to record whenever I wanted. I mean, a lot of people do like travel, like I'm gonna go travel and be, if you don't have the resources to do that, I think it's the same sort of um, landing point is kind of your self-discovery and being by yourself and kind of just realizing that, figuring out who you are and only listening to your own voice. I mean, now, I have like a fucking you know a child, a girlfriend, and a house, and like it's a lot of responsibility, and I welcome it. But if I didn't go through that year homeless, I probably wouldn't have been able to take this challenge on as well as I'm able to right now. Because now I just have a lot to give. Because I took I took a lot of time just for myself. So now I just like I have a lot of love to give now. But if I didn't do that, I'd be freaking the fuck out <laughs> like a child. While he was homeless, Saxon worked at a restaurant and washed dishes. He saved his money and after a year, moved in with a friend. And now he has a new job. Right now we are at my school that I teach at, Musicians Institute in Hollywood. I've only been here for like three months too, but it's super fun. I teach rap. Can't wait to go hard all along. Choked up while I'm writing this Didn't think my life would get so fucking trifling Living like mice and men 